ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you, Ashley. Good evening. <laughs> welcome to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, regular meeting City Hall November 1st, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. Uh, we'll begin. I'll start out with uh, Commissioner Hill to make an introduction and to lead us in our pledge. That sounds great. Thank you, Mayor. I'm honored tonight to welcome the lead pastor of Crossland Community Church. As the community knows, it's kind of a crazy time of year for four of us up here and others in our community. So you kind of rush in and you think, whoo, a lot's going on. And then when I know what this man is going through with our community, building a new sanctuary, helping our community, putting together Christmas programs for our children in need, we have nothing going on compared to him. So I'm happy to introduce my pastor, but more importantly, my friend, Pastor Greg Farrell. Um, before I pray, and, and in all honesty, on behalf of the community, for those of you who are running, um, regardless of what the outcome is a week from today, um, it's amazing your willingness to put your name out there in a day like this anymore. Um, it's just too easy for people to um, let unwholesome talk come out of their mouths rather than that which is useful for the edification of this community of people and to build up. I, I don't want to be too harsh on those because I'm a big fan of the First Amendment, but uh, we also have to understand that you pay an extraordinarily high price to do what you do and to have run as well as you have run. So if no one has thanked you recently, uh, I would like to be one who says thank you so much for what you do and you continue to do for this city. It is by far, without question, the best city in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we are the example, I think, that all other cities, both Lexington, Louisville, larger and smaller cities should follow because it is an absolutely outstanding community of people. So thank you for your contribution in making it that way. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we love you and we thank you. And you promised us in your word, you tell us in your word that we should all, every government authority has been created by you and the citizens under that authority should honor that at all times. And that we have a mandate to be good citizens. And so often as we look to our leaders, we citizens focus more on the mandate to be a good leader but it's equally important that we be good followers, that we be good citizens, that we be people who honor the seats that people sit in, if nothing else, Father. So we're thankful for the design that you've blessed this nation with. We're thankful that you blessed us with a community like this to live in. And so, Father, in the next seven days, I know there will be much vitriol from coast to coast, from state to state and from county to county and city to city but we don't have to participate in that we can let the common good be more important than our personal opinions we can let the results be what the results will be and live in harmony even if it doesn't go the way we personally want it to go because i do know one thing on november 9th you will still be sitting on your throne and you will still be in control of all things at all times. You are the sovereign, almighty God, and you already know the results. And so when we wake up on the ninth, may we live with the peace that comes from only you. So, Father, for this community and this commonwealth, we pray your blessings and your favor. For those who are suffering, Lord Jesus, please help them and help us be aware of the needs that are around us so that the least among us can rise up with all of us. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray to you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Hill. Uh, Mrs. Jackson, will you please provide a roll call? Commissioner Bailey. Here. Commissioner Beasley Brown. Here. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Perrigan. Here. Mayor Alcott. Here. Thank you, Mrs. Jackson. Uh, before I hand over to our city manager to make a couple announcements, I'd like to make an announcement. Uh, received this information today and this came from the U U.S. United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. 
Um, I shared this for our commissioners right before the meeting, apologize, but I'll share this letter. It is to the city of Bowling Green and this was given to the Section 8 Management Assessment Program. It's called the CMAP, and it's a certification for our city of Bowling Green and the Housing Division of Kentucky. And this, was, this came from the director, uh, Carol Spencer, and they made an announcement that under the direction of Elvera Remick, and uh, we know uh, Brent Childers in our neighborhood and community, uh, neighborhood and community housing, or sorry, services, services apologize. Uh, they received a score for affordable housing vouchers of 3.3 million, which is given by the city uh, for a final score of 104% we could receive a maximum of 130 points, but because they have, and Brent Childers explained this to me a few minutes ago, uh, we have more people going from our housing into more, um, into different developments, and actually the program is successful, and they're going into different types of housing where they can afford it on their own, and it is the succession rate of people we receive a maximum of 140 points, receiving the 104%, so overachieved, and that made our housing authority a high performer. So congratulations to Elvera and her team, Brent Childers and your leadership. So thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Mr. Meisel. I have another award, Mayor, and that is uh, from the Government Finance Officers Association. I th think we have one of these every, every couple weeks, but this is for the popular annual financial report that we put out, the, the nice looking pretty one that comes out usually about this time or right before Christmas. It's a condensed format of what you're going to accept tonight of the audit uh, that you'll see later on the agenda. But this is uh, something that we started 11 years ago. We submit it to GFOA and we've gotten another award for outstanding achievement in popular annual financial reporting. This gives the citizens an easy read on our financial performance of, of each year. And this was for fiscal year uh, 2021. Uh, and I'd like to thank Katie and Aaron Ballou, uh, Sean Weeks over in finance and the whole finance department uh, for their work on this and, uh, and just another good award stamp of approval of, of what they're doing with educating the public and being transparent in our finance financial position. Uh, lastly, I just want to remind anybody in the audience tonight that wants to make a public comment, uh, please sign the register at the back of the room uh, and we'll handle those at the end of the regular session. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Our first item is approval of minutes for a regular meeting, October 18th, 2022. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Carlos Bailey. No further questions or comments. Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2022 230. Municipal Order approving the promotion of Brad Stinson to the position of System <coughs> Analyst 3 in the Information Technology Department. I move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Perrigan, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown. Mr. Meisel. I'd like to ask uh, Danita Weeks, our IT Director, to come up and make her recommendation for this promotion. Danita? Thank you so much for this opportunity tonight to recommend a promotion for a very deserving employee. I would like to ask Brad to stand. Uh, Brad Stinson has been uh, with the city since 2009, and I am coming to you tonight to recommend that Brad be promoted to Systems Analyst 3. Uh, he's a dependable and dedicated employee who deeply cares about his work uh, and about the city employees whom he serves. He has a bachelor's degree in computer information technology from WKU, uh, and he holds several technical certifications in his field. Brad is always willing to take on additional work. Um, he is an integral to part of our department, and we rely on his knowledge and his expertise. He's proven that as he's starting to train and develop our younger staff members uh, as our department grows. He consistently gets excellent performance reviews, and he sets a new high standard for customer service. He far surpasses the minimum requirements that are needed to move to a level three analyst. He's very deserving 
uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing his, uh, his career advancement here with the city, and I'm very honored tonight to make this recommendation to you and willing to take any questions that you have. Thank you, Danita. Brad, you bring your family with you? Just by yourself, solo? All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's your little brother. Family, city family. Got it. All right. No further questions? Yes. This is, uh, this is much like the career pathing we have in many departments. Uh, we like to, to pr advance our employees, promote, and work them up uh, through the... Um, through these um, position, what do you call them, Aaron? Um, for example, the, the public works, the OMT1, it goes to OMT2, it goes to OMT3. And uh, this was put into play just a couple years ago uh, in the IT department to give, uh, give opportunity for uh, advancement in, in, in job placement. So I'd like to thank Danita for her work on this and congratulations to Brad. Brad is uh, our Brad of all trades, I guess you'd call him, and can do uh, pretty much anything and everything. So it's uh, well deserved. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. Thanks, Brad. Let's make this official. Roll call, please. Haley. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Congratulations, Brad. <laughs> all right. Municipal order number 2022-231. This order approving the probationary appointment of Amy Amos to the position of financial specialist in the finance department. So move. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Carlos Bailey. Mr. Meisel. I'd like to ask Aaron Holsey, our HR director, to come up and make this recommendation. Good afternoon. Um, so this vacancy was created when Leah Glasscock went from finance to human resources. And we did a recruitment cycle, both externally and internally. We had 28 people apply for the position, and we did 10 interviews. The uh, panel consisted of Sean Weeks, Zane Martin, and Tiger Tooley. We selected Amy Amos, unless she slipped in, is not with us tonight. Um, but we're very excited for her to join us. Um, she has been um, in the education field for a long time, but recently has switched over to become a billing specialist with WKU. Um, and uh, has a uh, her degree from University of Kentucky. So please let me know if you have any questions. Questions? Time. Roll call. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Congratulations to Amy. <laughs> Municipal Order Number 2022-232. In a order approving the probationary appointment of Logan Willis to the position of Communications Dispatcher 1 in the Police Department. I'll move. Second. By Commissioner Ergen, second by Commissioner Danny Beasley Brown. Mr. Meisel. This is a, a new position that you all gave us uh, permission to create uh, during the FY23 budget. It's uh, Dispatcher, uh, Communications Dispatcher 1, uh, also called a, a call taker. And this again is uh, the first level of becoming a, a dispatcher. And I'd like to ask Erin to step back up and make her recommendation for this hire. Um, so this uh, hire is a, another illustration of how wonderful our cadet program is at the police department. Um, <clears throat> Logan is one of our cadets. Logan, if you'd like to stand, she's here with her family tonight. And so she has been um, a cadet with us. Uh, also um, has gotten her degree from WKU uh, in criminology and psychology. So um, we, we informally call this position call taker. That's um, what most dispatch centers call this position. So larger dispatch centers do have two levels and she will be our first to come into this position. It allows her to become comfortable just taking calls. They will also dispatch fire. Um, and in her own time, as she becomes comfortable, we'll learn the radio. And as she does that, we'll be able to promote to communications dispatcher too um, it, as a career path um, when, when that is deemed um, that she has become an expert in that area. But um, very excited to, to start this new program, hoping that it really um, helps our new dispatchers to acclimate to the job, very, very challenging job. So we, we welcome Logan. Hi, Logan. Do you have family with you? Yes. Very nice. All right. Glad y'all are here tonight. Okay. Let's make this official. 
Roll call, please. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Congratulations, Logan. <laughs> Municipal Order Number 2022-233. Municipal order approving the probationary appointment of Mary Smith to the position of police officer in the police department. So moved. Second. That was uh, Commissioner Melinda Hill and Sue Perigen. Second. All right. I'm going to go. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you all know, we recruit for certified police officers year round, and we're I've been up here several times recommending appointments of certified police officers, and that's because of your support. You have supported us in a, a higher wage, and hopefully you know that we are doing um, some, some certified lateral um, pay to um, uh, show just some, some benefits to those who come to our department already with a lot of experience and some training that are really beneficial on day one for us. So I would like to introduce you to Mary Smith. She's in the back, if you'd like to stand, please. Um, Mary Smith comes to us um, by way of Russellville Police Department, so she is very regional. Um, she has an associate's degree in Damar College, um, and so we're very excited for her to join our police department. Please let me know if you have any questions. Welcome to Bowling Green, Mary, and we're very happy to have you. And we um, please can help us continue to recruit. So we need successful police officers, and we're very glad that you're joining our, our uh, family blue. So. And do you have family with you, Mary? So would you introduce your son? Hi, Charlie. Charlie. Welcome to Bowling Green. <laughs> All right. Roll call, please. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Congratulations, Mary. Okay, Municipal Order Number 2022-234. Municipal Order approving the probationary appointments of Levi Anthony and Miguel Paredes to the position of Parks Facility Maintainer 1 in the Parks and Recreation Department. So moved. Second. <laughs> moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Bailey. Mr. Meisel. I'd like to hand this off to Aaron Holsey, our HR Director. Aaron. Okay. So we have a couple of vacancies in our uh, parks department as facility maintainers, and um, these will be located within the maintenance division, reporting to Mike Mitchum. They are not able to be with us here tonight. Um, there's some information on the memo um, about uh, uh, Levi Anthony and Miguel Paredes. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Aaron. Questions at this time? Roll call, please. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Congratulations to Levi and Miguel. All right. <laughs> Municipal order number 2022-235. Municipal order authorizing and accepting annual software maintenance services from Cartograph Systems LLC of Dubuque, Iowa in the amount of $54,310.42. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Bailey, Mr. Meisel. You have a, uh, a very well written uh, memo in your packets from Danita explaining what cartograph uh, means to us, and it means a lot. It's our software that we use for uh, tracking all of our streets, sidewalks, stormwater system. Uh, we've been using it for a while. Uh, it is a sole source um, item uh, software that we use. It also helps us put together the, uh, the annual financial report with our, our uh, capital assets. And so we are coming to you tonight with, uh, this is, would be the third year of a three-year price lock agreement uh, to renew with them for $54,310. It, it, it includes uh, updates, uh, troubleshooting, uh, lots of, uh, of uh, support for the software. And Danita Weeks is here, still with us tonight. Uh, can answer any questions you might have on this this item. Fifty four thousand three ten to uh, cartograph for one more year. Thank you, Mr. Meisel. Questions at this time? All right. There's none. Roll call, please. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. 
Municipal Order Number 2022-236. Municipal Order Authorizing and Accepting Bid Number 2023-18 for Concrete Pad Construction from Baker Contracting LLC of Alvaton, Kentucky in an amount not to exceed $57,500. So move. Second. By Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Perigen, Mr. Meisel. We are in need uh, of space for parking and storage of our hazmat uh, trailer and, and associate equipment down at headquarters, headquarters station. Um, we took down the little um, fire safety house that, that was on the 6th Street side, 7th Street side, sorry. Thank you, Rob. And so we are, we would like to pour some concrete pads so we don't have to park that in the grass and other places and give it a, a permanent home. Uh, so we went out to bid. Uh, we're, we need to pour three different pads that connect each other uh, to get this thing uh, on, on proper ground where we're not sitting in the grass and mud but went out to bid I uh, got three bids on these three or, or we got five bids on three pads uh, the biggest pad is about 64 feet by 30 uh, the next one is uh, 16 by 30 and, and then th the third one is 15 by 20 and so uh, five bids best bid was from Baker contracting uh, for fifty seven five hundred dollars uh, Dave Hayner worked on this uh, Deputy Chief Rob Gillum worked on this and there's a map in your packets to show you where this would uh, be uh, uh, put it's uh, like I said it's on that uh, 6th Street side of, uh, of the headquarters station kind of in, in behind it there so uh, would ask for your uh, vote of approval for the 57.5 to Baker contracting questions or comments from commissioners at this time okay none roll call Bailey yes Beasley Brown yes Hill yes Perigen yes Alcott yes municipal order number 2022-238 37 237 municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2023-19 for fiscal year 2022 sidewalk repairs from baker contracting llc of alvaton kentucky in an amount not to exceed eighty three thousand four hundred dollars so moved move. second moved by commissioner bailey second by commissioner hill mr meisel every year in our capital improvement budget we uh we set aside money for sidewalk repair and so this this contract here this item is pertaining to that. We uh, survey uh, approximately, you know, 23 miles or so zones um, every year to see how the sidewalks are. We have found that uh, there's approximately 625 square yards of cracked or missing sidewalk damage in our uh, community that we would like to uh, repair. And so we went out for bid, we got two bids, uh, one again from Baker contracting the other one from Scott and Murphy uh, this would uh, remove replace uh, any damaged sidewalk uh, in in this uh, particular these zones that have been chosen for this year and uh, award this contract to to Baker contracting they have a, a deadline of January 31st to get this done uh, which will may be challenging with the weather, but uh, there are no extensions built into this uh, per the contract agreement. Uh, they they felt comfortable getting it done. Uh, Melissa Kanzler is here with us. Our our city engineer can answer any questions you might have on this project. Question? Absolutely. Um, so our memo mentioned that there was a map uh, that showed the zones, but I didn't see it in, in our memo. <laughs> can provide that to you uh, basically a few years back with our maintenance program we developed a map and split the city into zones roughly 23 miles of sidewalk in each zone uh, we kind of prioritize the zones focusing starting at the medical center coming up through the downtown core and over the hill uh, as our top priority because they're older a lot of pedestrians uh, that was our focus uh, the zone, uh, then we move over to the West End communities because there's older sidewalk there, and then we move further to the Southeast. Uh, it's kind of, so each year we try to evaluate uh, two zones. We may have to back off because of the price of concrete right now. We don't want to um, uh, overload our, our needs, but we look at this at two steps. We try to cut what we can with precision cutting that comes in real quick. Uh, the, the small trip hazards, a half inch or less, 
if we can't if it's missing it's cracked beyond repair trees that have up you know bucked the sidewalk we'll get a contract test such as this so uh, the zone we're in now is for this contract uh, is around 13th and 14th college and state up over the hill of course we don't repair sidewalk on the campus of Western but then we move down Chestnut and then there's parts of Creason and Emmett uh, that we're focusing on but I will be glad to provide that map um, it's part of our policy so are these mm -hmm. these are different zones in the lead pickup zones right very different yes okay. we tried to split them out so you'd have about the same amount of linear foot of sidewalk to look at every year thank you you're welcome so Okay, no further questions or comments. Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Municipal Order Number 2022-238. Municipal Order authorizing the acceptance of an award for Law Enforcement Protection Program grant funds through the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security for the purchase of electromuscular disruption technology in the amount of $266,613.64. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Perigen, second by Commissioner Bailey. Mr. Meisel. You all may be having deja vu on this. Um, we applied for this, and I think the day or two after the meeting, we got your, your all's approval to apply for it. We got word that we, we, we got it. So this is the acceptance of the 266, 613, uh, no match required to buy new tasers and taser cartridges for BGPD. Uh, Chief Delaney is here. Uh, Brent is here. Uh, coming from Nick, can answer any questions on this, but uh, the money is ready to accept. It was literally the next day. <laughs> I they, think it, it was. was. Yeah. Amazing. So. Hey, that's great news. Um, amazing that we have continued to have Nick Cook writing amazing grants and. His relationship obviously pays off as well, so um, he's worth his weight in gold. I think we all agree with that. All right, roll call, please. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Municipal Order Number 2022-239. Municipal Order accepting the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky Annual Comprehensive Financial Report for the period ended. June 30th, 2022, as prepared by the Department of Finance and audited by MCM CPAs and Advisors, LLP. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Beasley Brown, second by Commissioner Hill. Mr. Meisel. So before I call up uh, Ms. Vivian Grice, our Audit Committee Chair, I just want to say thanks again to our Finance Department, uh, to Katie for her leadership getting this together. This is the earliest we've ever done putting this on the agenda so this is a record November 1st <laughs> by one day <laughs> so uh, Sean Weeks as well Aaron Ballou put a lot a lot of time on this document uh, putting it together for Mount Joy uh, Chilton Medley to audit and then years ago we established an audit committee uh, here at the city to give you all um, an independent set of eyes made up by the citizens of Bowling Green to review our external city audit and Miss Vivian Grice is here tonight uh, as our chair and she's got uh, some comments to make and recommendation to you all for this audit committee met on Monday October the 24th for a detailed presentation by John Hill of the city's external auditors MCM <clears throat> of the annual comprehensive financial report for the fiscal year ending June 30th 2022 the city was giving a, given an unmodified or clean opinion stating that the financial report fairly represents the city's financial position for the time period audited the auditors did not find any material weaknesses or deficiencies in the city's internal controls. There were no corrections or misstatements detected as a result of the audit procedures and they had no difficulties with or disagreements with management. In addition, the city um, is stated to be in good financial standing as you can see from the detailed reports that were provided to you earlier. The overall government net position increased by 19% over the prior year primarily as a result of the purchase of capital assets, as well as the reduction of liabilities and updated pension-related costs. The overall government fund balance is $151.7 million, 
which increased, increased by 18.3 million over the last year. And I'd like to say that uh, coming in and looking from the outside, you should be so uh, appreciative of your department. They do an excellent job. All of them that we've worked with have been um, forthcoming and completely transparent, and we really appreciate that. So thank you so much. Thank you for your service. It's Vivian, you don't work at the medical center, do you? I'm the CFO for Western Kentucky Health Center. Well, my wife knows you. Shanika. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know people. <laughs> you can schedule a Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Vivian, very much. We appreciate um, your work. We appreciate the committee's work on this, and it's nice to have an audit that we're proud of, but most important, our taxpayers' dollars are being accounted for. So, Deborah, um, can we recognize the audit committee? Absolutely. Uh, can, Deborah, do you want to reel off the names who, who's on right now? Right now, we currently have uh, Ms. Vivian Grice. She is our chair. Um, we have Ms. Pamela Napier. She's our vice chair. And then we have uh, Brian Denning. Uh, and then our first, our fourth one is Mr. Barry Pruitt. And then Melinda Hill is our commissioner that's currently sitting on the committee. Deborah, thank you so much and proud of you and your work and, and the committee that has um, put in a lot of hours. So it's, it's appreciated and the audit report shows that. So congratulations. I would like to say the auditor, he couldn't say enough th nice things about our audit, our employees. Deborah, thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, everyone that was involved in this. And our citizens who take time out of their crazy schedules to be on this committee. They do look over it with a fine tooth comb. But everything was just glowing. Our citizens should be very proud of this city and the way they do their finances. Well said, Melinda. All right. Let's make, yeah, I just please. want to echo everyone's thanks. And, um, you know, when I think about no matter what part of the city you live in, how much you make, everybody is contributing to make sure we're taking good care uh, of this city. And um, ju I'm just so grateful. I can't think of more important work than uh, the time that's taken to make sure that we are taking care of every precious dollar. And so please pass on to the committee for all of us that. Um, how grateful we are for your work and also to the finance department looking through um, the comprehensive report and um, your management of these taxpayer dollars and how you have set us up for success and uh, how we are in, and in such a strong position to really um, make an incredible impact in our community um, knowing you know not knowing what might happen in, in the economy in the next couple of years knowing that you have set us up to um, be good stewards and, and to be a, a, a pillar of strength in this moment uh, I'm just really really grateful for everybody's work um, every day to make sure that we are taking good care um, of our citizens so thank you I would like to I know Jeff already recognized uh, Aaron but I would like to give special recognition to Aaron Ballou for all of the work this hundred and ninety some page report she ultimately puts together and it takes a lot of time um, and she really gets to the absolute penny on everything uh, as much as we you know make everything match and she's constantly going back and forth and making sure that everything is stated correctly so i do want to give her special recognition for all of her hard work and jeff can you remind us of what the certification Aaron just received for the city management level blue did you and aaron both received certification level aaron has her certified public um CPFO, is that correct? Certified Public Financial Officer. Um, so she does have that. Sean Weeks also has that. I think, Aaron, you also have a second certification, is that correct? It's the CMA. Yes. Oh. Yes, okay. level one. Sorry. That's what I was referring to. So okay. thank you. Kentucky League of Cities training. And yes. she just received that within the last three weeks. So congratulations on that as well, Aaron. <laughs> okay. Let's receive this report. Roll call, please. Bailey. Yes. Beasley Brown. Yes. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Alcott. Yes. Ordinance number BG 2022-49.
This is our first reading and is non-binding. Ordinance amending code of ordinances. Ordinance amending code of ordinances chapter 18, occupational license fees and taxes to make revisions reflecting legislative changes in Kentucky revised statute related to the transit, transient room tax and other administrative changes. So moved. Okay, moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Bailey. Mr. Meisel. Uh, the header of this ordinance uh, pretty much capt captures a lot of what, what's in here, but I'm gonna turn it over to Katie uh, to talk, let you let Katie talk about the the minor changes we're making to Chapter 18, our uh, finance chapter. Katie, initially this started because of House Bill 8 that the General Assembly passed uh, this past general session this year, and took effect this summer. Uh, we wanted to go in and update our transient room tax. Um, what is applicable in terms of all the different types of overnight accommodations that there could be in the community. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our language mirrored essentially what the statute now reads. Uh, and so that sort of started this whole thing. And then since we were touching chapter 18, we thought, let's, are there any other updates that we could incorporate at this point in time? And we found out that we needed a clarification in our occupational license fee language, um, very specifically in relation to um, the real estate investment trust and what is considered as income and what is not considered as income when we're looking at the net profit calculations. So um, this is, we, we looked to Lexington, they had some good language in their uh, ordinance. So we, we looked at their language and, and basically incorporated that within our ordinance and better defined what is the real estate uh, tax income, or I'm sorry, the real estate investment trust. Uh, and income and how that would be incorporated. So uh, that is just simply a clarification that we wanted to make sure that the CPAs in town um, could get that information. But it doesn't change anything we were doing, it just again clarifies. Are there any questions? Questions, comments? All right, none at this time. Roll call please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. Ordinance number BG 2022 50 is our first reading is non binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning two tracts of land containing 1.85 acres from HB Highway Business to LI Light Industrial located at 6456. Sorry. 2456 Russellville Road and Zero Enterprise Court, presently owned by Wayne and Elva Overholt. So moved. Second. Okay. That was by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner. Urgent, Mr. Meisel. This was a uh, five zero unanimous vote for rezoning on Russell Road, uh, 1.85 acres at 2456 Russell Road. It's uh, going from highway business to light industrial. Uh, Miss Rachel Hurd is with us tonight uh, from the planning and zoning. Uh, can answer any questions you might have on this. Uh, we have a, a map and everything that we usually have in your packets. Uh, but Rachel's here, can answer any questions you might, questions you might have on this one. Commissioners? A question. Um, I know they're making improvements. I see a map here and just was wondering if you could just describe those because it just, um, it doesn't show any like landscaping or anything. Sure. So this property has historically served uh, the Overholts for their storage building business and they would like to make some improvements to the property. Long story short, the zoning ordinance, if they tear down the existing structure, they will lose any grandfathered rights that they have. So the only way to accommodate basically redeveloping the site for the same use only to look uh, nicer, uh, the only way to do that would, would be to rezone the property to light industrial. So they will have to add landscaping and do some things uh, that, that aren't presently uh, on the property as far as trees and shrubs and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but the light industrial zone is what was needed to be able to accommodate their redevelopment of the site. And they're adding a parking lot. There will be some paving now or it'll remain all there, gravel? There will be some areas uh, of the site that will, re that will be required to be paved. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. No further questions. Roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Alcott? Yes. 
Ordinance number BG 2022-51, so first readings, non-binding. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning two tracts of land containing 1.95 acres from HB Highway Business to RM3 Townhouse Multifamily Residential located at 2424 and 2428 Russellville Road, presently owned by... How do you pronounce that? Jabber. Is it Jabber? Jabber. Okay. Properties, LLC. I'm a second. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kerrigan, second by Commissioner Beasley Brown, Mr. Meisel. Another unanimous 5-0 uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission, 1.95 acres on these two parcels, uh, highway business to RM3. Rachel can answer any questions you might have on this one as well. Okay. Questions at this Rachel? All right, roll call, please. Bailey? Yes. Beasley Brown? Yes. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Alcott? Yes. All right, Mrs. Jackson's going to go check. Our next scheduled meeting will be November 15th at 2022 at 430 in this chamber. Jennifer Moreland, gonna come on up. Yeah. You have, Jennifer, I've got 511. I don't have a stopwatch, but you have five minutes to speak to the commission. So. Got it. I want to say thank you for the mayor for letting me speak and thank you for letting free speech. You don't have to do that. The last mayor had a hard time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Um, I would like to talk about, remember what I told you about the homeless? Do you know what they're doing? And this is how cool, they are fighting being homeless. They are putting tents in these places. And what we need to do is why don't we have land to do that, to help the homeless? If we can't get a, if we can't get a homeless shelter, why not just land to put tents on? So it's, but I would like to expand the homeless shelter, but that's not gonna happen because a lot of people don't have money to do it. But what about just a land and put tents on it? What is the problem with that? But another issue is um, I lost my job. Um, I really wanna work, I really do. But I lost my job at Wendy's because there's no transportation. They used to run on Saturday, and they quit doing that. And then on top of it, they don't run at night like 6. They quit at 6, and that's really hard to work on people's schedules and working. We need a better transit. You know, and I've been trying to fight it for the longest time, and they just won't do it. I know that they said they're gonna take over, and when is that gonna be? When, is that, when are the people gonna take over the transit? When is that gonna be, do you know, anybody knows? No, I thought somebody was gonna take over the transit. <sighs> and then, I just have one thing to say. Um, good luck in your race, and um, my church is having a prayer night before the election, and I'm inviting, I'm inviting you to do that. It's, oh, it's November 7th, and it's at the Greenwood Church of Christ. So, and I have a question real quick. I have five minutes, I know. You're doing fine. I need... It wouldn't be so bad if the buses ran better, you know, and I need a ride home. But I can just walk, but I would like a ride home. So if somebody could give me a ride home, if not, I'll walk. The reason why I'm doing this is because I've seen people suffering. They are trying to get a place, and it's really hard. 
So we need to do something about the homeless because more people are coming. So we need to help them. That's it, Mayor. Jennifer, thank you very much. Um, I have another speaker that is asked us to wait one minute. And if he's not here in a minute, then we'll go ahead and adjourn. But out of respect, uh, this person asked to speak and um, he should be here. While we're waiting, I'll go ahead and let you know we will get the audit posted on the website uh, in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be out there for the public to be able to view as well. And as Jeff mentioned, we're working on the popular annual financial report, which takes this 190 some page document down to 10 pages. Um, so we're going to have that ready hopefully before the holiday open house. Uh, one, one more while we're open air here. Uh, one more announcement is the the veterans day parade i believe is this coming saturday downtown uh 10 o'clock starts at circus square comes up college makes the turn up 10th uh really good event so this saturday 10 o'clock tomorrow correct me if i'm wrong on that time but i'm pretty sure at 11:30, the governor will be here and we're going to have the groundbreaking <coughs> for the veterans nursing home tomorrow in our community which has been an endeavor for I think well over a decade and I, I know the Colonel Spiller um, has passed away but it was really his dream to see that our city would have this and um, it came in way over budget and the governor is coming with I believe a check to be able to fulfill that uh, need and um, well over 40 million dollars to build this um, it's been downscoped a little bit, I think, to 60 rooms. However, I'm very excited about this uh, endeavor that the city saw and the community has really rallied and our um, legislators have come together uh, on our behalf for this. All right, well, uh, we are going to go ahead and adjourn. And thank you for everybody for being here tonight. Awesome.